hand is mighty upon me, and no weapon fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. I am blessed of the Lord, his hand is mighty upon me, and no weapon fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. Praying child, godly children we are, never defeated, always winning, believing in fear of God. Praying child, godly children we are, never defeated, always winning, believing in fear of God. Like the holy plan, round about your table, children and heritage of God. I am seeking first the kingdom of God, because I am a preacher. I got to pray just to I am day. a preacher. I am a preacher. I am a preacher. I am a preacher. Yes, I have to pray. I am a preacher. Jesus God, my I am a preacher. I am blessed of the Lord. His hand is mighty upon me. Fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. I am blessed of the Lord, His hand is hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. God bless you and welcome, welcome, and welcome again to daily prayer for our children. Our biggest and warmest welcome always go to people that are meeting us for the very first time. So if that is you, we're glad that you are here. We'd like you to know that Monday to Friday, by the grace of God, we're here declaring the word of God into the life of our sons, daughters, niece, nephew, and even the generations that are yet to come by the grace of God. So if that is your cup of tea, please feel free to join us Monday to Friday as we declare the word of God. And if you desire the name of your children or your youth group, you know, any children that you um, you are interested in, if you desire their name to be added to our prayer list, please, by all means, DM us on Instagram and we will endeavor to add those names. There's no restriction to the number of names that can be added to the list. And um, myself and every other parents that are standing in the gap will continue to lift up our children as often and as regularly as we can. <laughs> I, I don't try to say a specific time because sometimes I remember those children more than once in a day. And sometimes my days are really busy and I didn't even get around to praying for them. Uh, but because I pray for my children every day anyway, so I kind of use that umbrella to cover all the children that I know. But I like to be honest and truthful. I don't tell you I do things I don't do. I'm not superhuman. Uh, I do that which I'm able to do and I like to be honest with people. So that's exactly how we roll. And I know there are some faithful parents and they tell me how they also include the children in their daily prayer as they pray for their children. So I know that if there's a day that Funke doesn't remember or doesn't get to do it, I know there's one of my sisters or one of the dads or somebody that, or grandparents, because we do have grandparents, they're going to stand in the gap. I know my auntie is always praying all the time. She's with us every day. So I know she's praying for us as well. So I just want you to know that there will be people at one point or the other praying for our children. So again, um, welcome to all those people that always go back to watch, leave a comment. Thank you. We really appreciate you. And as always, whether you're praying for us, you're helping us in one way or the other, we're grateful 
um, nothing is ever too small, nothing is ever too big. So if what you can do is to support us by watching and sharing as well, we're grateful. So thank you for all that contribution that you're making. So I also want to say this as well, that if you have not shared, if you have not liked, if you have not subscribed, if you're not following us, please, I will ask you to do that as well. Uh, we try to be as relevant to our generation as possible. Um, and we try to equip parents with as much resources. We're predominantly based on the word of God, but we once in a while we do have experts in their fields. I have one of my sister that is... Um, an educational psychologist we have that uh, obviously i have a psychologist in the house myself and then obviously i do have a lot of uh, doctors in the house as well who are not only medically uh, inclined but in mental health as well so once in a while we do have people in expert fields that bring their wealth of resources to us uh, whether educationally mental health wise in any form or dimension just to help equip us in a holistic way as we raise godly offsprings. So uh, just want you to know that we do that as well. We use not just Bible, 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 uh, but obviously as children of God, we try to establish everything that we do in the word of God. So having said that, uh, I'm not alone today. I'm glad to have one of my brothers in the house. And we started a series a way back uh, on preparing our children for marriage, which I think is a very apt topic. It's very relevant and is a necessity as we raise godly offsprings as well. Um, which do, I think we're going to start by looking at some questions that stemmed off from the last time that we were together. So we're going to address some of those questions. Hopefully those questions are going to stimulate more questions. It's going to give answers. It's going to give resources. It's going to equip us. It's going to help us to better navigate this. Maybe is uh, uncharted territory for you. Maybe it's a strange territory for you. Maybe it's a challenging territory for you. Whatever it is, hopefully be and myself we're going to help you to navigate this area and if you do need i'm going to say this again if you do need anybody to hold your hand through this area please please i'm pretty please don't keep quiet um we are supposed to help one another pull one another up support one another encourage one another if i've walked a path before that you've never walked before then hopefully i've got a wealth of resources that i can share with you so please don't keep quiet reach out i'm sure bishop would love for you to reach out to him um if you want to reach out to me in order to reach bishop if you don't have the direct contact that's absolutely fine if you want to reach out to me it's absolutely fine i i will really prefer you go to bishop to be honest with you but it doesn't matter if you come to me as well i am equally uh capable of doing that as well so please uh bring keep bringing the questions keep leaving the comments and um it also, if you disagree, because it doesn't always, we, we, we don't always expect everybody to agree with us. So if you disagree or there's no clarity in some of the things that we've said, by all means, please bring it up and we'll be more than willing to address it. So uh, for anybody that doesn't know what it is that we're treating and you were not here the first time, like I said, uh, you can always go back to a playlist. I always, sorry, I always have a playlist for all uh, the men and women of God that comes to us. So I have a playlist for Bishop as well. So it's preparing my children for marriage. There's a playlist on our channel that you can go. And if that's all you want to listen to about the marriage series, you can do that. Uh, YouTube even do, do, does a podcast now, so you can use it or listen to it as, as a podcast. You don't have to sit and watch the whole thing. And if it's Bishop that you just want to listen to, uh, you can do that as well. You can just listen to Bishop and nobody else. You can do that because there's a whole playlist dedicated to Bishop Bath Orgy. So feel free to do that. So I want to bring my brother on board as we step into the second leg of this journey. Uh, so, Bishop, here you are. It's good to have you back by the grace of God. So, everybody, this is Bishop Bath. 
wow bishop is not there internet is playing up oh okay. my goodness so oh, we can't see bishop so forgive us uh that can is you the can you hear me that we can hear you bishop we just can't oh, see oh praise you. god you're awesome totally they can't crazy. see me okay so he's totally frozen everybody so when i have everything back again with bishop i will bring bishop back on board um he's talking uh to one of the young men that is helping him to resolve the issues in the background there so while they're having that conversation i've muted him so um as soon as we get some green light this is this is one of the things i tell people about technology you can have everything ready and then when you're ready to go it looks like you've done nothing at all so just bear with us why uh we get bishop back on board so we let me go back uh and continue to tell us about what it is that we do and how we do it and where you can find us by the way we are literally i think on every social media platform that is going except tiktok for some reason i'm not i'm just not gravitating towards tiktok uh plus it takes a lot of time as well uh, to uh do all those things that we do on all the other places it looks like bishop is available uh so if everything is okay with bishop and is ready to go i'll bring him back on screen so if you're good to go just give me a thumbs up sign and i'll know that you're ready to go so okay everybody as always please help me to give a resounding pcc family welcome to bishop bath all right okay excellent fantastic we've got you back again how thank are you, you sir i am fine ma'am thank you very much how are you I'm very well, very well, very well. Super, very and well. the family, everybody is the very apostle well. and the greater ones. I yes, call sir. them the greater than ones. Excellent. They and they shall be greater than yes. us in the name of Jesus. Some of my European or English colleagues, they have learned from us Africans not to just ask how are you, but they go ahead to ask how's your wife how's your children exactly and uh, how's everyone because mm. she said that she learned that from africans and it's really nice to not just inquire about the person you are dealing with because the family is much more than the yes. person standing before yes. you so i'm quite well the missus is fine and they're urging me on and um, awesome is here doing great things we had to give up somewhere in order to make sure we stream tonight and we thank god and we thank god for you um an apostle and all the greater than ones who are there with you thank you so much and of course our brothers and sisters who are the essence of mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. and those who are joining from various parts of the world mm -hmm. um it's amazing people call me from africa to ask about this particular program um even people i never knew you know, would want to watch it, they are asking after it. So we do thank God for you and what God is doing through you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. And um, we're grateful that we are reaching those far places and that's what we want to do. Mm. And that's why we keep asking people to share with as many people as they can. Mm. Uh, you know, your brother is always nagging you. And one of the reasons he's always nagging, not just you, I think everybody that he knows, to be honest, is, yes. you know, uh, Paul says, um, you know, why there is time uh, that the night is coming when none of us will be able to do anything. Absolutely, anymore. absolutely. And, and so he's always advocating that this is the daytime mm -hmm. and we need to run and make haste instead of us just... Uh, um, allowing the liars so to say those that are perpetrating lies mm -hmm. who can probably afford the time and the money more than you and i mm -hmm. instead of just allowing them to uh dominate the airwaves mm -hmm. that we also should contribute as much as we can um, Super. to help bring the truth the whole truth and nothing 
but the truth. Yeah. So thank you. Thank for you, ma. Coming on the journey. So Bishop. Yes. I don't know whether you want to recap any of the things that we did the last time for the benefit of anybody, or we just want to jump into the questions. All right. I think we really do thank God. Um, the topic you brought up last time was a topic that I believe challenged most people because we have always tilted towards one way. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I like about this platform and about you is that you try to get people so that they can see um, where they cannot see, you know, being on one side of the road. So mm -hmm. we try to take perspectives beyond where we are. And that's mm. one thing you do very well, because if there's anything that destroys, it is what is called blind spots. Mm. Um, mm. So most of us function with a lot of blind spots, um, but you try to shed light and, and then get some pilot um, signs to signal mm. <laughs> those, pilot, mm. those blind spots yes. so that we can turn our heads and look at that point because it's very vital. So we've looked at the issue of marriage and preparing our children for marriage and so much was shared. You, you brought up a lot of things and insight and I responded to some of them. And like I said, I went out thinking a little more about the things we deliberated. And I think the best way to recap is to ask those who missed it to go back and watch Mm. on on this channel and okay. see what was treated because i have a weakness which my wife has pointed out so many times when i start recapitulating on what we've done i end up treating the topic afresh oh, again okay so, so let's not do that God so, bless her. Amen. so I always say, okay, if you missed it, please go to watch go the back. video. Okay, okay. I, I don't want to get back. Someone say, oh, you are saying you've treated it before. Okay, okay. All right. So we, we just go straight to some of the questions. Because some of the things I walked away from, I, I thought deep about it in terms mm -hmm. of um, should everyone really be married? Okay. Um or should we prepare some for marriage and prepare some for no marriage? Um, Good question. I, yes, I went away thinking about these things and some of the questions that I noted down, um, you know, how do people know that they are made for marriage? Mm. And how do people know that they are not made for marriage? Okay. Uh, something like that. And mm. then... Is that set on stone? Can people start out saying that they are not cut out for marriage and somewhere along the line, they say, well, I think this marriage thing is for me. Mm -hmm. And then they get into it. Or it, could it be that people you know, start up and say, yes, marriage is for me. And then suddenly they realize that they are not made for marriage. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I've never thought about it. I was so challenged when you made a comment in terms of telling the young ones that listen if you're not made for marriage i'm not going to force you into it mm. well right some of us have looked forward to having grandchildren <laughs> <laughs> so it's always mm. us planning praying uh, to forgot to bring their spouses mm. so all these things are things that you know i walked away Thinking, thinking so about. much about last week and um maybe if it's okay we start with how do people know that they are not made for marriage excellent how do people know that they are not made for marriage i'm going to use two examples um one is also from scripture and then the other one would be for myself <laughs> maybe I use myself an example um, of, I like the authority of scripture, but maybe we read, let's look at the scripture and then look at, from there we can build. It's not always best to use ourselves, our experiences 
our uh, starting point is good. We start from scripture and then we bring our experiences to marry with scripture uh, to see how scripture can be illustrated in our own time or times using our own experiences. One of the scripture is what the one we know very well. We, we know it clearly it's in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. And that is the scripture that says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and receives. As a matter of fact, I like the way the New International Version says it. It states here, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. So that immediately tells us that it's in our place to want to find. It's in our place to want to find. And another scripture that comes to mind is when the Bible is speaking about the office of a bishop. And you know, the office of a deacon, of a pastor, there are things that qualifies them. And as a matter of fact, that scripture also ties with finding or getting married because there also the Bible talks about the home and that talks about the marriage. And you find that it's the word that was used that place is the word desire where the scripture says, he who desires the office of a bishop. So you realize before he talked about a bishop, there are qualifications that are applied to the home, the marriage, and especially to raising up children. In other words, not managing our home very well can, as a matter of fact, as it does, in our own time, disqualify people from the office of a pastor of, or a minister because if you cannot manage your home well, you cannot manage the house of God. So if I tie those together, I could then say the way people desire the office of ministries in the kingdom of God can also be the way they desire the office uh, I mean, they desire the act of wanting to get married, relationship, could we get married to a husband or get married to a wife? So now looking at these two things, number one, finding, number two, desiring. So someone can desire it, but not yet found that wife or found the man. So those things will play a major role. Um, I wouldn't think it would be in my place or in anyone's place to be able to illustrate and say that I can say to you, you are not meant to marry or you are meant to marry. I can look at the person and feel, well, this person can raise a home, this person can also build a family, this person can make a man better in living this life, and this person can make a woman better in living this life, and so if they could make, marry, that would be something that could work out for both people and bless the family and bless the community and bless the nation by extension. Thank you for sharing that scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. So that's the scripture. It's a trustworthy saying that whoever aspires to be an overseer has aspired in noble tax. And it goes down to talk about managing the family. So looking at that question and tying it together, we can also go back to an Old Testament pattern Jesus alluded to that when he talked about people being giving in marriage. When the scripture says that they marry and they are giving in marriage. So if Jesus alluded to that, there are so many scriptures, um, 
Matthew 24, verse 38. Matthew 24, verse 38. And also there is Matthew 22, verse 30, talking about the resurrection and comparing it to now. That in the let's start from Matthew 22, verse 30. In that scripture, the scripture writes, I, 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 I'm reading it in King James. I think we have it there. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are giving in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. This is one scripture that really blessed my heart. That in the resurrection, they neither marry or are given in marriage. That means before the resurrection, <laughs> they can marry and they can be given in marriage. Now, given in marriage applies to the context, then we are parents determine who their children marry. And I think now it's still happening in some culture where parents play major role. But I'd like to look at scripture and see or see if that is um, totally acceptable now um, in terms of people getting married playing no role in who they marry. So these are a whole lot of questions that come up. So number one, it's in the time of resurrection, before the resurrection, we can marry, we can be given in marriage. So it's now open, tying all the scriptures together, together, we can now see that if anyone desires marriage and is able to wait, and then they find who that right partner or spouse I try not to use the word partner. I try to use the word spouse. If they find that person, then there's nothing wrong. The Bible says if you give your child your virgin, talking now also in, in the New Testament, does he give their virgin in marriage? That is alluding to parents who allow their children to marry and those who keep them and you know, for either purpose of serving the kingdom of God, they don't, that they too have not done anything wrong. So it's now tied down to the person, desire. Do you have the desire to want to get married? Number two, your ability to wait while you are trusting God, uh, waiting to find the right person and living right in the sight of God your ability to endure temptations, your ability to control the desires, um, the emotional, the sensual desires, and your ability to say, yes, I can get on with this, then that is something I can say will determine who gets married or who does it. Your ability to desire it in line with the will of God, your ability to wait, your ability to also Find who that person is and let it be your right, the right one for you. Because sometimes people find because they want to satisfy the uh, desire, the carnal desires of fleshly desires. And this runs them into difficulty. And what happens is when they eventually marry and they have gotten what they want because the purpose is no longer right before them. The purpose of marriage is no longer before them. The purpose has always been to satisfy that sensual desire. Now they get into marriage, they get to satisfy it. The purpose could be just to get a companion, which is the key thing. Companionship is important. Um, I don't know how many of us, I think I cited this book by Walter Trubbish, Walter Trubbish. Is an American, uh, I think Australian, but he served as a missionary in Africa. And right there, he saw so many things. And then he wrote a book that he, and then out of that book, the title of the book is I Married You. And he did what is called, <clears throat> excuse me, the triangle of marriage. Three major reasons why people go into marriage. They say it's either for sex or for children or for the sake of love. And then 
after a while, if you live in this part of the world, we have people get into places for various reasons and do things for various reasons. I tried to extend it to become a rectangle and I added immigration. So some people marry because of immigration, either the woman wants to you know, stay in the West or stay in that part of the country uh, where they want to, they get to marry. Um, so these are just some reasons so when those reasons have been actualized initially, it is no longer something so pressing before them, then you see them begin to drop. So the question is, who determines? I don't think it's in my power as a parent to determine whether someone or my child marries or not. I will desire it for them. I will desire it, I will long for it. Like we say, maybe for the sake of having grandchildren, uh, as most parents do. It's amazing. The older you get, the more you begin to gravitate towards that. Uh, in those days, we used to hear people say, I want grandchildren. We are like, ha -ha. how are they saying this kind of thing? But when you begin to get to that age, you know why they say that. But the key point is, it's not in our place to determine for anybody whether they will marry or they will not. Because if you do, when the challenges and the difficulties arise, you they will fall back to you that you led them into it or you did not lead them into it. So the key thing is to advise people, encourage them, live out their lives in a way that glorifies God, in a way that gives them peace, and enables them to achieve what they need to achieve. If they desire to marry, it's a good thing. There's nothing wrong in it. They desire it, and but if they do not desire to marry, they just want to face their career and do the work of the ministry or do research or help community in other ways and even adopt other children it's entirely up to them. It's entirely up to them. We try to say to people, think about these things ahead of time. Because a time will come maybe in their old age when there's no one around them again. They begin to feel as though they lost by not getting involved in marriage. It's good to think through these things and see how best they will live it out. I don't know if that makes sense. What do you think? Um, sorry, we can't hear you. I'm not sure if we... I'm going, okay, to, come, I'm going to come back to the question yes. by putting the question back on the screen. Yes. Which is, how do people know if they are made for marriage? Yes. So in light of the scriptures that you've shown us, some people are given in marriage, some mm. people desire marriage, some people find a wife. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the scriptures we see different ways of arriving in marriage. So I could find a wife. Or I a husband. Desire, mm -hmm. okay, yes, a spouse. So let's say desire yes. a spouse. Or I could be given to my spouse. So those are ways that we can arrive in my understanding. That's how I can find myself in marriage mm -hmm. because I desire a good thing because my parents decided they're going to give me marriage or because my husband or my wife or the wife found a spouse that's good so yes those are the the principles that we looked at in the word of god but my understanding is i'm a human being i am funke mm -hmm. how does funke know that marriage is for her mm -hmm. if i don't if my parents don't give me marriage if I don't find anybody I'm interested in, and if I'm not desiring marriage, mm -hmm. does that now mean I'm not made for marriage? This is the reality. This is practicality. I understand what the state, the stages of, I want to say acquiring marriage, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. That we can find, uh, we can get married. But how do I know that me as an individual how do I know that marriage is for me? 
Absolutely. That's, that's a great question. Now, just to throw a little light on the word give in marriage, um, the, this is the way I try to break it down. In the Old Testament and in some of the cultures where this is still being practiced, it's actually the parents that determine. Marriage is agreed between parents mm -hmm. without the person involved mm -hmm. even being involved. Uh, they only say to you, this is who your husband is going to be. This is who your wife is going to be. And they respect their parents' wish. But I've looked at it even in our own time. That does not, does not qualify people to be legally married. Mm. Except where the two people then seeing themselves, like Adam, because people will say to you, it was God that brought a wife to Adam mm. and brought a husband to Eve. Mm -hmm. And when Adam saw her, Adam said, wow, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. So that means parents can play that role and the people involved will definitely say, this is it. Thank you. Thank you, parents, for really connecting me to this. But the way I look at it in our own time to qualify, because in one of the requirements legally in our own time is that there must be acceptance between the two people. Um, if the two people did not come together and agree and accept by law that marriage cannot be qualified as being a genuine or legal marriage. That's so important. The third thing, the second thing is there must be sexual consummation, whereby if people now come together and then for a reason best known for themselves, they deny themselves a sexual relationship for up to a year, then that marriage in the sight of the law does not stand. Not because one is sick or the other thing. Scripture even says, do not defraud yourself, except if it be for the reason of praying so that we be not tempted. But if this one is simply because getting into the marriage, the one said, no, I'm not really, I don't think I can give myself to you, then that disqualifies it. Then the other third point is that marriage must be for permanence. So if marriage is done for any other purpose, that once that purpose is fulfilled, then they are out or they just stay together and no longer want to be fully married, then that disqualifies it. Having said that, it's important for us to know that in our own time, I see that given in marriage as recommending, apart from the way that at the altar, the father or whoever represents the family will walk their daughter to the altar. When we ask, you know, those of us who were people who would always say, who gives this woman in marriage? And the man will walk down and be able to say, I did. I've wedded people who said it's their mother that will give them a marriage. And there was a battle in an African context. So we've never seen a woman coming to give the daughter a marriage. But the girl had a point. She said the, the dad had never played a role in her life. And she, she was a baby when the dad left the mom. So what's the point of a total stranger coming to give her a marriage? So I see her point. I see her point. I just allowed them to do what they wanted to do. But the key point is this, giving in marriage in our own time could be by way of prayerfully recommending when you see someone that can suit, you know, two people that can suit together in marital relationship, you can prayerfully recommend for them to pray about it. It's their choice. They pray they discover themselves. If they finally say, yes, I think we are meant for each other, good. But if at the point they now say, oh, thanks for connecting us, but we really do not think we are meant for each other, fine. You don't need to press it on. There are people who, you know, people take some liberty. I call it taking a liberty because of their position spiritually. They say, God told me that this is your wife this is your husband. 
I tried to go after the way of the great servant of God, uh, Bishop Idahosa, who was taught that since God did that, it cost him a lot of trouble. That's why he said, he who finds, you find a good thing. So you go and find. So no, the point is this. There's nothing wrong in saying, oh, I have a, a beloved daughter in one of our families. I think pray about her. She, you'll be blessed by getting married to her. Or I find a good brother. Pray about him. You guys get along in holiness, righteousness, get to know each other. And if it works, good. But if you decide it doesn't, that's nothing wrong. So that's my further way of interpreting giving, apart from what we do in the altar and also uh, what some families do by deciding. But that decision to bring people together must bring about personal acceptance. Now let's go to the, uh, maybe my personal experience with Through Light on the question of how will I know that I am made for marriage and or I am not. I got born again at the age of 23. Um, before then, as a young man who is so inquisitive about life, I've explored life in some ways. And when I got born again, I now felt that life is about heaven and nothing more. And then I concluded that there was no point for me to get married. I said, number one, I don't, the desire for sex has been dealt with by my new life in Christ. I don't go thinking about women. I don't go imagining things. I don't go having longing for it even. And I felt because that is not there, I am already not cut out for marriage. Secondly, I felt that maybe because some people um, get into marriage because of children, I said my parents had nine children. They have seven sons and two daughters. Then later, they lost one son and one daughter. So I was like, hey, if it's children, then, oh, it looks like, are we frozen? You are frozen, but huh? I'm trying to tell your engineer yes. Yes. so that he can be doing it while you're continuing with your discussion. So that's yes. fine. Everybody Absolutely. can hear you. Okay, awesome. It's frozen. I don't know why. Okay, I have to take you off screen because you started speaking to awesome. So that's why I said I'm trying to contact your engineer so that he can do it while you are continuing with the work. So, um, okay, so we've lost Bishop, everybody. Um, if you are just joining, everybody, you are welcome. We are talking about how to prepare our children for marriage. And when we started the last time, uh, a few questions has come along the way and we're trying to address some of the question. And as you can see, we still have not even answered the first question. So if you're just joining us, you're in good company. If you wanna know what it is we've talked about before, please go back to the playlist. You will find it there and you can follow us on there. So when Bishop is ready to go, he will give me a thumbs up sign and I will understand that he's ready to go. But I don't see any thumbs up sign from him. So until I see that, now I see the thumbs up. So I think it's safe for us to commence. So uh, again, uh, if you want to catch up, like I said, everybody, you can do that by going to uh, the playlist that has Bishop Bath on it. And it says the title is Preparing My Children for Marriage. Okay, we are up and running. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Apologies about that. No can worries. It? I've already told you. I, you yes. noticed I didn't say anything because... <laughs> I'm used to it and I try to tell all my guests you yes. can learn to be professional in these situations. Praise it will God. happen and there's nothing you can do about it. So we we continue and forge ahead as best as we Thank can. Thank you. That's good. And that's why I say you're more and more professional. So those of us we're coming up, we'll get there someday. Amen. Amen. 
All right. So I was talking about my own Your experience. Your personal experience. My personal experience. So what happened was after I got born again, um, my body I brought it under you know control. For those number of years, there was nothing that made me to gravitate towards sexual desire. Uh, I then secondly felt that's the point I was making that my parents had children. Nine, nine children, seven sons, and two daughters. I said, if his children, we have enough in the family, so there's no point going to start another. And um, the final question was the best for me. I'm, I'm like, hey, I've been, I am born again and made for heaven. So what is the challenge here? I better prepare for heaven, and then we get on for heaven and forget about anything on this earth. So that made me in a way to conclude that I'm not going to get married. I was doing ministry, I was, I grew in faith, but incidents happened that made me to immediately know that, hey, I am made for marriage. I am also made to have a family and that was when i began to realize at a point the lord began to deal with me personally that's number one he began to walk in my heart to make me realize that marriage is for me Mighty upon me, and no weapon fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. I am blessed of the Lord, His hand is mighty upon me, and no weapon fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. Praying child, godly children. Winning, believing in fear of God. Pray, child, godly children, we are never defeated, always winning, believing in fear of God. Like the holy plan, round about your table, children are the heritage of God. Seeking for us the kingdom of God, because I am a preacher. I got to pray just to I am day. a preacher. I am a preacher. Whether I am black or white, I am a preacher. Yes, I have to pray. I am a preacher. Yes, I have to pray. I am a preacher. 